Welcome to the latest episode of the ETF Exchange brought to you by the NYSE. I'm Douglas Jonas, your host. I'm joined today by Jerome Schneider. Jerome is the head of short-term portfolio management at PIMCO. As a reminder, today's interview is for informational purposes only. The NYSE does not recommend any investments or investment strategies. Let's get to it. Jerome, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you, Doug. I want to get right into it. You and I have had a lot of conversations about the idea of high cash balances and the short-term money market positions, if you will. How are you and your team really framing out that conversation, right, as we're entering into 2021 here? Uh, how, how are you working with clients around those positions? Yeah, thanks, Doug. We think actually 2020 to 2021 is proving very similar to periods that we've had in the past where we've had very low rates. People are focused on capital preservation, perhaps a little bit of defense. And in doing so, they have to be more constructive with how they think about their cash allocations, quite simply. We have a period ahead of us of low interest rates, benchmark rates. Uh, we have also a period at the very front end of the U.S. yield curve, which is going to be pretty much close to zero interest rates for the next few years. We've seen a period of this for uh, you know, a few years back, uh, 2010 through 2016, where we had these low rates. And specifically, the period of 2013 through 2016 was one where we had very low rates, subdued activity in terms of opportunity sets, in terms of where treasury yields could offer. But at the same time, we had an extreme defensive position with a lot of funds in money market asset, a lot of assets in money market funds. Today, we have a similar experience. We have more than a trillion dollars moving into money market funds. We see people looking to take opportunities and risks in perhaps places they shouldn't. And at the same time, we are seeing people look for opportunities to move beyond that zero yield that they're finding in overnight repurchase agreements, T-bills, and even money market funds backed by government treasury. So the key here is, is to find balance between the triumvirate of capital preservation, liquidity management, and ultimately some total return. And that total return is really where active management can come in in our ETF space today. Jerome, you brought up money market funds, and I'd love to capture your view there, in particular money market funds, as we start to think about the idea that interest rates may change, right? There's a lot of news and conversations about whether or not they'll go higher this year. How, how, how do you think about money market funds? Yeah, quite honestly, what we're saying to clients is that we would need to be aware of two facets here. One, recognizing that there's a very low rate environment, one that's dominated by an overwhelming, overwhelming amount of money market assets near zero uh, interest rates, whether that's T-bills or money market funds or overnight repurchase agreements. And then combine that with the fact that investors are looking for opportunities to take steps out of those money market fund segments, perhaps for a little bit more income, perhaps for a little bit more yield. And in doing so, they need to be prudent. Well, there's two things to keep in mind here. There's a growing amount of assets under management in that money market fund space. We've had a trillion dollars move into that money market fund space over the course of the last year alone. Another risk off environments, we've seen similar episodes back right after the financial crisis, similar reaction function. And so we can extrapolate from some of those periods back you know, seven, eight, nine years ago to understand the dynamics of safety that people are finding in money market funds with the low rate environment. What we'd say is, is that investors need to be prudent. Simply, we want to find a balance between the triumvirate of liquidity management, capital preservation, and then total return. Some of the go-to solutions, which include prime money market funds, should actually be given a second look at this point in time. Not because they're the go-to, but because there's actually, uh, the foundations aren't as solid as they once were. We've seen creaks in the foundation with prime money market funds, those that take commercial paper and other types of credit risks. Back in March of 2020, there's going to probably be regulatory responses over the forthcoming years on how to deal with that. But at the same time, we think that investors need to be really prudent in thinking about the credit risk they're taking, and more importantly, how far down the credit spectrum they're going. And so doing so is an important question, but making adjustments to these, to these cash management portfolios really takes a knowledge base, which helps to transcend not only what has happened in the past, but what could potentially happen in the future. And having the resources and understanding to do that is incredibly important. This is why we sort of think about our tiered liquidity structure in this regard using some government money market funds as that firm foundation for overnight liquidity, and then at the same time, keeping it very minimal, and, but judiciously moving some additional assets into what we call our tier two or tier three type of solutions, which take, seek to compromise and, and find, uh, find opportunities into the premiums for the next few months or even perhaps the next few years. And that's where our Mint ETF, our low duration ETF elder fit in. So of course we're talking ETFs, this is the ETF exchange. 
PIMCO, you offer two ETFs in this particular space. We have MINT, M-I-N-T, and L-D-U-R. I, I wonder if you could help us kind of frame out those ETFs, and particularly as we're talking about, you know, this cash balance and short-term investments. Yeah, we think, we think it's a healthy relationship. Understanding that there's a need for immediate liquidity, perhaps with money market funds, but then again, tearing out your cash allocations over the next few weeks or months, and then obviously to the next few months or even perhaps years. And in doing so, you're able to help capture some additional total return in a diversified manner and really utilizing the short-term uh, corporate ETF, uh, short-term ETFs to really find ways to put your cash to active work. In other words, trying to monetize liquidity premiums that are in the marketplace, maintaining diversity, still being high in quality, but really recognizing the fact that you're not paying a premium through low, exceedingly low interest rates, perhaps zero interest rates on your income by moving out. So Mint has done a very good job about creating this opportunity set for investors for more than a decade. Since we launched it in 2009, it's really has garnered and laid the foundation for many of those investors who want to take that step out of money markets and really find opportunities, and more importantly, total return over the next few months that they wanna use these high cash allocations. We think that zero rates are here for a couple of years at this point in time, especially in the front end. So the benchmark rate shouldn't rise. And if that's the case, there's going to be some structural premiums that Mint can offer that money market funds can't. But we actually think this holding period is actually a little bit longer, in which, in which case we're going to think more strategically about how to embrace those longer periods. And that's where our low duration ETF, ELDUR, L-D-U-R, does come in. And we think that there's a growing opportunity. We're seeing good, uh, good inquiries and good trends in terms of growth in terms of this strategy to really embrace what is going on into that one to three year sector to find opportunities not only in corporate bonds, but diversify into other arenas that include structured products, asset-backed securities, and the like. So uh, creating a high quality portfolio for investors that have that foresight to utilize that tiered cash structure over the next few years is really an advantageous way to think about producing some additional total return. And I think one of the bigger constructs here is recognizing the fact that both of these strategies, both Mint and Elder, do so in the context of trying to earn a return, not only just above zero, but help to try to preserve purchasing power in an inflationary environment that is subtle, but modestly growing over the next few years. And so preserving the purchasing power of that cash sitting on the sideline will be a growing discussion amongst all types of investors, retail, institutional, pensions, et cetera, that will simply look to preserve purchasing power of that cash sitting on the sideline. So here's, a, here's two good opportunities that we think to consider creating a tiered structure within your cash, utilizing the ETF structure. Now, Jerome, you, you certainly mentioned the idea of zero rates or lower, but you know, the, the lower end of, of where interest rates could be. I am curious, you know, when you start to think about the value prop of PIMCO, you know, what is it you talk to your clients about what you bring to the table in this type of rate environment? Well, quite honestly, we've been here before, and we, what we see is that it takes a tremendous amount of resources to not only find opportunities, but to know what to steer away from. This is the type of environment where people reach for a little bit more yield because they view the environment as being safe. Whereas we want to have the expertise and acumen to really draw upon not only finding those opportunities, which we think are safe and can produce a positive return for our clients, but at the at same time, be critical and analyze and try to steer clear of assets that many others simply won't find the, the, uh, the writing on the wall that might be more hazardous or create more volatility to those cash management solutions. And so over the past four decades plus, the short-term solutions at PIMCO have done exactly this. Look for an actively managed solution, which takes into account the macro elements of where the economy is headed and where it is today, and then looks for a bottoms up solution that help pr present a balanced risk adjusted return uh, uh, subset for us to invest in. And even though it's cash, it doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. In fact, what we've witnessed before, it actually takes a lot of active management, a lot of research, resources, and more importantly, understanding how all these influences come together to really extract value even in this low rate environment. And history would suggest that being defensive and prudent coupled with opportunity, opportunistically seeking a different diversified solutions can actually produce positive total returns for portfolios even for their cash in this low rate environment. Well, Jerome, thank you very much for being with us here today. That's a wrap on the latest episode of the ETF Exchange brought to you by the New York Stock Exchange, the home of ETFs.